And welcome back to another podcast episode um, here at Logically Fit, where we are just trying to share some good information so you can make logical decisions about your health and fitness and become the CEO of your health, essentially. We just want you to live your best life. Um, it's also morning here, so good morning. I'm going to be drinking my coffee while I do this. My yes, good old tried and true protein coffee. You spilled though. Potentially, more than likely. Like I was walking in here with my coffee, you know, when you fill it so high that you're doing like the balancing act. And I was walking in here. And so Calvin and I share our office space to do. He has his podcast. We have bars. And so he, I was walking in there. He's like, you better not spill it on the table. And I was like, more than likely will, but I'll clean it up. And he's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> like, but he's, he's a clean freak. I'm not messy, but like, I'm not as clean as he is. So it's like driving him insane. And I'm like, whatever I get my coffee, but yeah, no, I got, uh, the protein coffee. You see how I share that all the time on my stories, like the protein coffee. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's just the easiest way to get more protein in like, and I just look forward to it. I'm a little brat without my protein coffee. So I have to have it every single morning do you do it too because i know that you no, use I legion don't. i just have i i do i use it for my i usually have like especially after a long run like this morning um when i'm coming mm -hmm. back i'm currently sitting um at our office at our gym um but when i come back i usually have a like a smoothie with like a bunch of fruits and peanut butter and then i use the chocolate yeah. protein um to put in there yeah. just because it, it blends so well like normally you have this little I don't know that like greedy residue when you mix things with protein mm -hmm. and with legion i don't find that yeah no i don't and either. legion's like awesome the chocolate is chef's kiss i've had that um my favorite flavors are going to be the um cinnamon cereal and the cocoa cereal because sometimes flavors are a little too sweet or too much in your yeah. face those are like they're still really great but they don't like hit you in the face with flavor mm -hmm. and I, again, I use it in my coffee. So I like kind of like coffee-ish flavors. So the cocoa cereal and the cinnamon cereal. Out of the two, the cinnamon cereal is my favorite. Um, and also, I wanted to point out that the plant-based protein isn't bad either. You know how some plant-based protein is just like icky? Like it's just like, mm -hmm. oh. Um, it's, it's actually really not that bad. It's really good. Um, I used it for quite a little bit because we were in a period of time trying to test out if whey protein was causing digestive issues for me where well the way for legion doesn't have any lactose in it they take it all out but still wanted to try it so i was trying that out and it was really good so but oh toby sorry we're going down a little bit of a real you now before we dive into the podcast toby did you see that they just released um their mushroom blend i did and i'm super excited for that because mushroom coffee like if i have a really bad adhd day um, it actually mm -hmm. helps me focus. You know how I use Alpha Brain from on it, yeah. And how it mm -hmm. how that helps me zone in. Um, we yeah. actually have a tea place that's right across mm -hmm. the door, like right across the road. Like if I didn't have a wall right here next to me, I could see it. Um, and they have yeah. a mushroom blend coffee as well, and I tried it and it helps me focus. So I'm super excited to get my hands on that product as that, well. yeah uh, they're comparing it to uh mud water that's what it is like oh, the I've, I've it's basically a comparison water. to that i've not tried so mud water i have my dad was obsessed with it for or it still is for a really long time he started buying his own ingredients to put it together but i told him about this and he's like oh shoot i've got to try this because the reason being is because it has like all the ingredients kind of like um <clears throat> excuse me like reishi mushroom am i pronouncing that i could i never really remember is it reishi i think, I think so. so i um, think it's reishi and then it's the rei right yeah mm -hmm. rei yeah and then like lion's mane mushroom and things like that but when they're comparing it to they have a little comparison and they're like you can see that they're comparing it to other big name brands but the the big thing about legion the reason, one of the reasons why we really love them and we partner with them is because they're clinically dosed so they're not just putting the ingredients into the bottle but they're also putting it in dosages that actually make a change that's so like a big marketing thing that people yeah. do is like hey we have 
this ingredient, but they like sprinkle just enough for it to say that it's in the, in the bottle, but not enough for it to actually be for you to see the benefits of it. But like when you compare it, the dosages are uh, like really great in comparison to other big name labels. So I'm excited to try that. I might have to do that because right now they're doing their um, 4th of July BOGO sale I know. going on. Uh, buy one, get one, have off. Calvin did that. And then he also has, so like, you know, when you use our code, like thriving on, you get the, your first order is 20% off, but then you get reward points. And so he uses our code and he put an order in and he got two products and he had enough points where he got the first product that you would have to pay for, for the BOGO for like 30% off. Sick. And then he used our code on that one. He got even more points for the next order. So it was really dope. So we're going to have to, I'm going to have to put an order in for that one and try that out. But okay. End of the rabbit hole. <laughs> we love those. Toby, what are we here to talk about today? Ooh, we are here to talk about, to understand Ozempic a little bit better, right? Mm, um, Ozempic, I think that's a big yes, topic. Um, the reason why is, I know we talked about it in a, in the previous podcast episode too, but when I yeah, was, it was the, um, what to do if I think that I have hormonal issues, like step yes, by step to figure that kind of correct. stuff out. We went yes. down a, a bit of a rabbit I, hole there. I actually have two, um, two people that approached me to talk about it. One was a, was a personal training client that I used to work with. Um, and she had hormonal issues going on because of a, because of a fibroid that was growing, that was about large enough, like the size, do you know those like eight pound slam balls? Yeah. The size of those. So that was growing inside of her. Whoa. Um, Holy crap. The amount, like it was so large that it was just putting so much pressure on some of the other like endocrine organs. Um, mm -hmm. And it was just disrupting so much of her homeostasis that they removed that, which it was only like two pounds in mass, which is not mm -hmm. nothing, but compared to the size, but then she dropped weight like crazy. And when she went yeah. to a bachelorette, her friends were like, oh my God, what are you doing? Are you on Ozempic? You know? And she was like, no, I'm getting healthy. You know, <laughs> like I'm getting healthy. And then I had another gentleman that I was, that I was talking to in Costco. Um, who was talking about, um, he was, I was at the food court and he was talking with his buddy and his friend approached him and said, Hey, you're looking good. And you look like you lost a lot of weight. And then he said, yeah, you know, I'm doing it. I did, but I did it the wrong way. And they were like, what are you talking about? And he said, it's, he said, I just used Ozempic. And then he said, you know, if I stop using it, I'll probably go right back where I came from. And then I yeah. butted into the conversation. I said, you know, the right response for that would have been thank you. Um, like, yeah. hey, you lost a lot of weight. Thanks. Right. But it's just yeah. under, understanding that it's not a fix all solution. It's not a magic mm -hmm. wand that you can wave. Right. So it made me actually very happy that even though he used it, he understood that it's not magical, but it can yeah. be. Right. So okay. it's not, yeah. it's not, it's not all bad. It's not all good. So yeah, the first yeah I, think, I, I think before we, do you yeah. mind if I pop in really fast? No, the, go right I ahead. think before we, do, the big thing that we want to do is it's, this is the theme of the podcast is mm -hmm. We're not trying to throw our own personal biases in no. what we want to do, right? We'll put it in our own viewpoints, but understand that taking a, a step back, Ozempic is a tool just like anything else, mm -hmm. right? And just like a hammer, you can use a hammer to build a house. You can use it to tear it down. There's appropriate times to use it, appropriate dosages to use it, appropriate context to use it. So there's no reason to demonize the hammer mm -hmm we need to take a step back and make sure that we're using the tool correctly. And I think a big theme that a lot of people see is that either these are two different camps where it's like, it's the best thing in the whole world, or it's the worst thing in the whole world. You should hate yourself if you use it. I think we like to live in the gray where it's like, it depends, like it depends on the person. So we're going to talk about it. Um, we're going to go over what it is, um, what it was intended for all these different things, but our big goal is for you to make an educated decision for 
yourself. Like we have our own opinions of what we will do for our own life, but we want to encourage you to make an educated decision for you. And if you have any other questions beyond this, like feel free to reach out to us. Like Mm -hmm. you can already tell we love to talk. We love to answer questions. So I know. So the way I kind of want to structure it to, I think for whenever I talk to people about it, um, without making it a two hour lecture, right? Um, is when we, we segment it into little pieces, right? The intended use, what was it designed for, right? Um, some misconceptions about it. How can it be effective, right? And then what are some potential side effects or what to look out for in case it backfires, right? Um, what do you think? Sorry, I forgot I muted myself. I I think, no, no, I think that's a really good thing. I think another thing to point out is like some things to take in consideration when you are making the decision. I think one important thing we should go over is um, like long-term side effects and things like that. Yeah, that's all part of it. Right, but yeah, I think that's about it. I think you've got it all covered. Yes, right, so. Um, Ozempic, which is just the name brand for the active ingredient, semaglutide, um, is a medication that was primarily developed and approved, right? So it's effective for the treatment of type 2 diabetes, right? So it functions as a hormone-like peptide, right? GLP-1, and it helps regulate blood sugar levels. Right. Um, it, it helps the pancreas release insulin when blood sugar levels are high. It lowers the amount of glucose, right, which is your blood sugar. When your body breaks down some of the foods that you eat, it increases your glucose. But it lowers the amount of glucose that's being produced by the liver. And it slows something that we call gastric emptying right it prolongs the feeling of fullness after eating right those are the main things that ozempic is designed for to do and that it does really really well which is why it works really effectively as a type 2 diabetes intervention drug right but some of those things as if we if we navigate them properly and our body needs help with that it can aid in weight loss right so it has shown to be effective in promoting weight loss but again it's not a miracle drug and it shouldn't be used just for the purpose of potentially losing weight with it because its primary function is a diabetes drug Right. I think that's very, very important to keep in mind. So if you have no type two diabetes related problems, you are most likely wanting to use Ozempic as a quick fix for weight loss because people expect rapid and significant weight loss without considering the need for a lifestyle change, right? Like diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I think another um, thing to point in here, another context is there's this term called bridge therapy or transitional therapy. Yeah. Um, they use this a lot. Like this was a big term for helping people with depression and or anxiety, but now it's starting to come with um, Ozempic as well, where it's like, there are some people, a sick depression, for example, there are some people that they know if they made better decisions within their lifestyle, they wouldn't struggle with depression so much right? Or they wouldn't need depression medication, but they're in such a huge hole with depression. They can't even get out of bed that doctors will Mm -hmm. start them with antidepressant medication just to get the ball rolling, just to get the motivation to get out of, out of bed, to start working out a little bit more with a long-term goal of getting them off of medication. They just need, they need to take that approach of that medication first. So there are some people, um, I think that more times than not, it's going to be a very, very small percentage of people that are in that situation where maybe bridge therapy is for them, where they work with a specialist, a doctor that knows how to get them off of that long-term will help them create better lifestyle changes, 
will help teach them how to properly eat, take care of themselves, work out. So eventually, when they take away the, the Ozempic medication, they still have that lifestyle change, that new identity that they need to maintain the results. I think more times than that, like you said before, more people are going to use this as a crutch or an excuse, right? It's, I've tried everything, I've tried everything and nothing works. It's like, I get it. There are some people that do feel that, but have you? Have you tried everything? I mean, like the four stages of learning, the first stage is um, unconsciously incompetent. You don't know what you don't know, right? You might be actually missing. That's why a lot of people come to us and they're like, I've tried literally everything. I'm like, have you though? And we take a step back and we create awareness of what they're currently doing and what they might be missing. And then they become consciously incompetent. That's the next stage of learning, right? So that's something where if you feel like you're stuck and you're like, I feel like I'm that person that needs to use this as bridge therapy, take a step back and really question what you know, right? Make sure that you're making an educated decision for yourself. Because again, the people that actually really do need this is more than likely a small percentage of people. Mm -hmm. Most people of, really should just go ahead. Right. And out of all of those people, not everyone will experience the same results, mm -hmm. right? It's effectiveness exactly. can vary based on, other health conditions that are underlying right so it's a very individualized result outcome um some people aren't in a position where they can adhere to a comprehensive treatment plan that includes ozempic either right we talk about that often where it's like optimal is no longer optimal if it no longer if you can't adhere to the plan anymore right um and the biggest red flag for me is that there is no real need for medical supervision. You can get your hands on it without being medically supervised. And using a drug like that um, without proper medical guidance can lead to misuse and other potential health risks that we'll cover in a second. Right. Um, but, it's just a testament. They're here to make money off of you, not actually get long term results. Because yes. if you got long term results and didn't not need everyone, it anymore, not everyone, not but everyone, a lot of people, but a lot of the company. Yeah. Like the, mm -hmm. the, uh, what's it? The, oh my gosh, the medical like sales industry. Sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. I need a couple more coffees, don't I? Uh, the medical sales industry, they're literally, they're, they're sale people just like anybody else. They want to make money. Right. So if they can get their hand, your, your guys's hands on it without supervision of doctors, that's one less barrier that they have to go through in order to sell their product and make money off of you. Yes. Again, they want to make money off of you, not see you healthy. If that makes yes. sense. Majority of them, not all, but majority of them. But when used correctly, it can actually be an effective tool for weight loss, especially um, for people who struggle with obesity or other weight related health issues, right? Simply because it does suppress appetite, right? So it slows down hunger signals, right? Which if your issue is overconsumption, Ozempic helps reduce calorie intake, right? Um, it enhances your satiety. You feel full for longer periods, which again, reduces the tendency to overeat. So if you've gotten yourself into that hole strictly by overeating, Ozempic can help, right? Another thing that it does really well is it improves insulin sensitivity, right? So it, it reverses some of that, that insulin resistance. So if blood sugar regulation is a problem for you, and that's the reason why you're saving larger amounts of fat why you are seeing the health issues that you're seeing ozempic can help with that right but in order for it to work effectively for weight loss it should be part of a comprehensive plan that includes dietary adjustments right a balanced diet is important because the second you take the drug away your body will act just like it did before. And if we haven't made any changes to the food that you eat, you'll get yourself back to the hole that you came from, right? Um, regular physical activity, because again, 
if we're relying on a medication to boost your metabolism, we need to make sure that we have something in place when we're taking the medication away. And if you're taking a medication, please, please, please have it be medically supervised. Regular check-ins with a healthcare provider, right? Monitor progress, adjust dosage if necessary. You already said some people or some practitioners use certain medications as form of bridge therapy. And as the body becomes less reliant on dosage, we can actually take the medication away or we can lower it, right? And if it's not medically supervised and you don't have anybody there that's controlling that for you, it's going to be so, so difficult to not rely on it and to take it for the rest of your life. Yeah. And I think another reason why to have somebody there supervising you is that there's more and more people coming out with more and more negative side effects of the Zempic. Mm -hmm. And it's like some of these things are going to be like kidney disease, uh, thyroid cancer, um, intestinal blockage, um, all these different things. And I think it's a point of just because you're losing weight doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to become healthier. There are some people that are in a position where if you just lose weight, you will improve your, your overall health. But then there becomes a line where if you keep losing weight, it doesn't mean that you're actually getting healthier and there can be some negative side effects if you are not working with somebody that knows what they're doing. For sure. Right. Um, Again, I think most of those will come if we use it strictly for weight loss. Um, Mm -hmm. If there's nothing else associated with it that makes you need that medication. Again, I worked with a client and on her intake form, it said um, she was on seizure medication. And I asked her, like, are you epileptic? Like, that would be really beneficial to know. And she said, no, I'm not. I was like, then why are you taking the seizure medication? Because the potential side effect of it was moderate weight loss. And her doctor was like, hey, overweight seems to be something that you want to fix. And she wasn't even that overweight. Um, but he was like, we can just prescribe this seizure medication and it might help you lose weight. Right. It's using a medication that's designed to do something completely different for the sake of potentially seeing a side effect. Right. Um, So if we're using Ozempic just for weight loss without any of the other health issues that make us need the medication and or without proper medical guidance, um, it more than likely will lead to something that we call over dependence. Again, one of our big, big things in our framework is that we, that we teach independence, that you can take care of yourself yourself. And if you rely on someone else for a drug without making lifestyle changes and without understanding why you have to make those changes, it can really lead to limited long term success you may see immediate success but long term you're going to insert yourself right back into that up and down up and down that yo-yo diet and scale that we see a lot of people stuck exactly. in. exactly right yeah um, exactly it's just another it's weight just regain another, yeah yeah it's just another form of yo-yo dieting if this is going to be a short-term mm-hmm. aspect of it and there's more and more research showing that medical professionals are saying that if you want to keep this off for a very long period of time you have to stay on Ozempic for the rest of your life, right? Like they're, they're coming out with research where it's not a sustainable approach. If you can do this for the rest of your life, it will stay off. But once you get off of it, right? Like it's all going to go back. And the main reason why is because the habits that you have, the lifestyle that you have, it's all still there, right? We talk about this a lot is that if you want to make lifelong change, a big thing that you have to do is change your identity, kill off the old person and become this new person. Because a lot of times people are struggling with their health. They are having maybe some unwanted weight or things like that. And it's not necessarily because you don't have a macro breakdown or the perfect workout or there's something broken in you. It is that you have character flaws. And I say this with all the love in the world, every single person that really creates that lifelong change comes to the fact of these are character flaws that I have to fix within myself. If I fix that, a lot of the decisions, the actions that I have every single day will change. Therefore, my body will change as a happy side effect of the type of person I am, 
right? So it's like, it's just one of those things where it's, it can be potentially a quick fix, a yo-yo dieting um, tactic, just like anything else, if you're using the tool incorrectly. Mm -hmm. There's actually a study that I just read the other day, I think two weeks ago, mm -hmm. um, of a practitioner that works a lot with, with women who have um, experience with IVF, right? The mm -hmm. fertility service. So he's like, a, um, I don't think he's an OBGYN. Um, he's a PCP primary care provider, but he works a lot with, with women who have fertility issues. And one thing that he's seeing now is actually um, a trend of postmenopausal women or perimenopausal women who are on Ozempic who are now getting pregnant again. Um, so it increases, or at least right now, we're assuming it increases fertility chances. But now he has this one patient that's 54 pregnant with twins like just imagine inserting that into your life um at a point where normally the human body is like we're done with that like the negative health consequences of um of children that are being born the older and older the woman gets like that's nothing new we know that right yeah. it's that that there's more complications the longer people wait to have a baby and now we see more older women on Ozempic with pregnancies, right? So that's, that's interesting. I know. That's what mm -hmm. I thought too. I was like, who knew? Right? I wonder what else we find within the next year of people pushing it and pushing it and other people doing research on it. Yeah. Um, that's the thing is that like, here's another thing is that Ozempic literally just came out, right? Don't it's, know. it's yeah. Like we don't know anything about long-term repercussions. We know nothing. Like we're starting to see some cases coming out. There's even some some lawsuits that are being built up of the negative side effects of Ozempic. Yeah. And I just wonder what are what are gonna be the negative side effects of it three, two, three, four, five years from now. And I think any medication that we use has negative side effects. For but sure. if we don't That's know what the long term pamphlet, right? Exactly. So like People can make educated decisions. It's all about pros and cons. No matter what you do, there's going to be pros and cons. There's always a give and a take. And it's up to you to make an educated decision of if you want to deal with the consequences, good and bad, right? That's up to you. Mm -hmm. But we don't even know what are the negative side effects. We don't even know the pros and cons because we I mean, barely even um, know the long-term side don't effects. Know, we just don't know the severity of them, right? Yeah. Um, we know what it's designed for, right? So we know that mm -hmm. it does not very well. Um, but I like to compare it to pain meds, right? There are so, how many people do you know that simply refuse to take Tylenol or ibuprofen because they're like, they're too oh, tough to I'm take medication, them. right? Well, hey, I'm not I too have tough, a, I just don't like, like it. Right, I have a headache, take some ibuprofen. Well, no, I can just drink a little bit of water. Oh, right, hey, I'm overweight, just move a little bit more. No, I can just take a medication. Right. It's like yeah. now because it, it's 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 an inconvenient change that I have to make. So now we're looking to be um, exonerated of the work that I have to do in order to get mm -hmm. what I want. Right. Uh -huh. um, that quick fix but, magic pill. Like, yeah, there's again, while it can be effective, um, it's associated already with a lot of um, some serious side effects. Right. Mm -hmm. GI issues low blood sugar, especially when used with other medications that lower blood sugar and we're just using it as a weight loss drug, right? Um, inflammation of the pancreas, which can actually put you into the hospital, right? With something that we call pancreatitis in the clinical world. Um, gallbladder issues, um, kidney issues, um, thyroid tumors, um, again, th this is, this is more that we see on rodent studies. So I'm always very, very careful how much I read into rodent studies simply because they're rats, they're not humans. Um, yeah. knock on wood that we haven't seen that in humans yet. Um, so we don't know if that risk applies to humans, right? But in rodent studies, um, semaglutides like Ozempic has been linked to thyroid tumors. 
right? Um, including cancer. I know some of the other ones are like talking about thyroid, a common symptom is hair loss. That's another common mm -hmm. symptom of people taking those empty. Yeah. So allergic reactions, red rashes, itching, difficulty breathing for some people. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so again, I don't want to bash it because for managing type two diabetes, it's a valuable medication, right? And it can be very effective if your weight gain came in correlation to that being the underlying problem, right? Mm -hmm. However, um, it should be used under medical supervision as a part of a comprehensive plan that includes physical activity, lifestyle change, and dietary change, right? And we need to be aware of the potential side effects and the need mm -hmm. for those changes that you made to be an ongoing thing. It needs to become a lifestyle, right? I think that's the most crucial thing to take away if we're trying to achieve and maintain successful change. It has to become part of who you are. And we can't and that's put something a that we talk over. about. Yeah, that's something that we talk about with all of our clients. It's like, you're not, when you sign up with a coach, you're not doing a diet, you're not doing a program, you're becoming a healthy human being. Mm -hmm. That's what's doing. You're committing to becoming a healthy human being. Whatever we're doing, we need to figure out something that's sustainable for you. So that way it's not, hey, when I'm done with coaching six, 12 months from now, right, I'm, I'm just done. No, this is like, I'm committing to this till the day that I die. This is who I am now. Because again, if you keep having these timelines, like this is just, this is something that I know is a red flag when somebody is like, Hey, like, how long do I have to do this for the rest of your life? <laughs> like, or, Hey, like, I just want somebody to tell me what to do or do it for me. I don't want to have to think about things. It's that when you have like a specific timeline on your, in mind, or you try to rush things, or you want somebody to do it for you and you don't want to think about things, that type of mindset right there is probably the reason why you're in the situation right now. You're looking for people to do things for you. You're looking to make it easier on you. And I'm all for working smarter, not harder. I'm all for, like, don't get me wrong. I'm not a huge fan of the hustle, uh, the culture where it's like, you, everything needs to suck in order for you to be healthy. Like, who cares what you feel? It's like, we, we need to have a bridge between facts and how we feel. How we feel is super important. But, like, there the research is undeniable when it comes to mental health and becoming the best person we are is that we need to be able to do hard things. When we do hard things, we are like so much healthier psychologically, right? And if we are healthier mentally, we're going to want to do more things for our health too, right? So that mindset shift, that transition you're hearing us a lot is that bottom line, this is a medication or like a supplemental thing like anything else if you are going to use this you have to know you have to dedicate yourself to make some changes within yourself because the reason why you might be considering this for weight loss isn't necessarily because you are broken or nothing works for you um i love you but you're not that special okay very very small percentage I of am. people are I'm a snowflake <laughs> i fly upside down i fly up i don't <laughs> Right. But majority of people, it's as simple as you just haven't done the right things enough, right? You haven't dedicated yourself to a lifestyle change and that needs to happen with or without Ozempic, no matter what you do. If you want this to be the last thing that you ever do, right? Like you need to make that change. And if you're in this situation where I being honest with myself, radically honest, right? I haven't really done that yet. I am that type of person that always goes after quick fixes or those quick challenges or juice cleanses or things like that. Then I would take a step back and maybe consider working with somebody who actually has that trend, like that works with not only teaching you about nutrition fitness, but also helping you establish a new mindset, a new identity first, because all the negative side effects that we're listing off, like I'm like, I, I'm a little scared. I probably wouldn't touch it. Like, um, just because of all the negative side effects, like it, the pros do not outweigh the cons for me personally, I would be very wary about it. And so if you can take that route before and not have to deal with paying thousands of dollars for the rest of your life 
and not getting this negative side effects and always having to work with a doctor. I don't know about you guys. Some people might be thinking different, but I don't like going into doctor's office. I sweat so much because I do not like going there. It's not fun. People don't like spending that much time, that much money and that much effort in the doctor's office. If you can just make those lifestyle changes, like you don't have to spend so much money, but you also get, you get the prize of loving who you are because of it. Those changes, you don't just change your body, you change who you are, you develop better characteristics that you can actually be proud of. So I, that's my two cents is like, it's a tool like anything else, but I think right now we just don't have enough information to make sure they, like, to know if the pros outweigh the cons. If anything, I'm a little bit more skeptical. And I think that it's a tool like anything else. And I think with our society today, we are the most unhealthy mentally and physically we've ever been. I think that we are in a position where majority of people are going to widely abuse this tool rather than make logical and educated decisions for it. Mm-hmm. And it kind of scares me, to be honest with you. Yeah. So, but what is your overall opinion on it, Toby? I think I go two ways. Um, yeah. It's if you need it, use it until you don't need it anymore. My, mm-hmm. It's a, it's a crutch. And again, it's like if you have your leg broken, um, you're going to walk on crutches for a while because you need to. So you're going to use them, mm-hmm. right? But the second you're able to walk without them. You may want to use them, right? Because it was, I don't know, maybe it was easier for you, but your doctor is going to encourage you not to, right? It's the, sa- it's the same thing with this. Now, if you don't have your leg broken, don't use crutches, right? Your foot might hurt because you have plantar fasciitis because you rolled your ankle coming off the steps this morning and you had to hurdle over your toddler, right? Or because you looked on your phone while you were on a walk and you drifted to the right and you rolled your ankle down the sidewalk. Right, just silly things, but that doesn't make you use crutches, even though your foot hurts. Right, but if there's something seriously wrong, you're going to use them until you don't need them anymore. Same thing here. If there's something seriously wrong and you need the medication for it, use it. But if you don't, don't use it. Right, what are you going to do when your ankle hurts, but you don't need crutches? You're going to put a brace on, you're going to take it easy for a day or two, right? You're going to put some ice. You just do the home remedies. It's the same thing when I'm struggling with weight loss, but I don't need the medication. What am I going to do? Right? I'm going to change my diet. I'm going to take it easy with going out for a little while, right? I do some home remedies. I can do workouts, movements, walking, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a, if you need it, use it. If you don't, don't. Uh-huh. Right. Um, if, you just, if you just if you just use it if you just use it to take the easy way, um, this may sound harsh, but I think that says a lot about your character. Mm-hmm. Right. A hundred percent. It's you need to do hard things in order to be a healthy human being. It's no it's doubt about like, it. And it's not like that the hard things become less hard. You just become better at doing them. Like they're still exactly. hard. They're. They'll never get easier, just like working out. Like a squat will always be a complex movement, right? Mm -hmm. And it's never not hard. It's just that you get stronger, so you get better at squatting, right? Yeah, Um, 100%. Yeah, and like so many people are like, but it's hard. But I've tried everything and it doesn't work. And I and I get it. I've been there. I've been stuck in that hole thinking that I've tried everything and it doesn't work. I've like been like, Hey, like, I just want somebody to give me a quick fix. Cause I don't want to deal with us anymore. It's a very emotional state, but I can't tell you enough. Like I've been through the hard transitioning your life from going from struggling with your weight. And I made some really bad life, life decisions during that time. I was in a hole when I finally decided to get myself out of it, like rock bottom. Right. But, and yes, transitioning was out, like out of that was hard, but one, you need to do hard things. Hard things aren't bad. I think we start, it's like the whole digging your, your, uh, the analogy where dogs, when you don't give them something to do or something challenging, they start digging themselves into their own hole. Like we're the same thing. If we're not doing something challenging, if we're not pushing ourselves, if we're not trying to get better in some way, right, we dig our own holes, right? We create our own problems. And so 
when you're pushing yourself to become better, a lot of times you become a 10 times better person because of it. And I mean, all the times that like all the life struggles, some of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my life was during that transition of becoming this extremely unhealthy and depressed and anxious person to being a healthy aversion. But like, it was extremely hard. It put me in positions where I was crying like all the time, didn't know if I could do it. But when I look back at it, those are some of the times where I am the most proud, right? I'm like, holy crap, I did that. I can freaking do anything now. It gave me proof that I am capable of doing anything in my life. And now we're sitting on a podcast, so we talking to people. And like, if you knew me, like back when I was struggling, there, there would be no ounce of, yeah, she could probably do it. Like none whatsoever. Most people that uh, knew me back then and then they meet me now, they're like, I don't even recognize you. You're not even the same person. And it's just because this kind of stuff, it elevates your life more than just your health and your fitness. It elevates everything in your life. You become a better person. You, you develop a better character. So yes, it is going to be hard, but good. Like good. Like you're going to get better from it. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You need to do hard things in order to become the best version of yourself to become the CEO of your health, which is a big theme here. Right. So that's, that was my two cents. I can hear the barbells in the background. You're at the gym, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I love the sound of clean bangs. It's awesome. Okay. So that is our episode on Ozempic. Okay. Yeah. Take it for what it will. Yeah. Take it for what it will. Ultimately, you are going to make an educated decision for yourself. If you take a step back with all this information, you do your due diligence and whatever decision that you make, you believe that that is best for you. We're going to be a hundred percent behind you. and We're going to love you for it because bottom line, you're taking action. You're doing something right. You're not sitting on your hands. <laughs> you're not just doing more research, but not actually doing anything. Like you're taking action. It doesn't matter what you do. As long as you believe that you are doing the right thing for you, do something. You'll figure it out. There's no such thing as perfect action. The only way to figure out if something is right or wrong is by doing something, right? So we love you. We're proud of you for taking action, doing something. But if you ever have any questions for us, let us know, right? We're here to help you. Uh, We're here to answer your questions any way that we can. We're also here to cheer you on. I love when people reach out and they tell me updates about their like health and fitness. I'm like, send me videos. I PR, send me a video. I want to see you. <laughs> I love those things. Okay. But um, do you have any other final remarks so before we let them go? No. No. Well, we appreciate the crap out of you guys. As per usual, if you felt like this was helpful, do us a favor. Um, leave us a review. Uh Ask questions below or comment what you think about the episode. Share it on your story. Share it with people that might need to hear this. Um, our big goal is that we're just trying to get the good information out as best as possible to help you become the CEO of your health. And we can't do it without you guys. So if you can take the time to share this episode a little bit, we trust me, we, we would appreciate it more than you would know. Okay. Other than that, I think we're good to wrap it up. I know that you got stuff and I got stuff to do too. I got a client call I got to get ready for. Uh-oh. So, Uh Uh-oh. All right, guys. We love you. Until next time. Bye.